And I'm going to ask Ron Hines to join me at the podium for a presentation of tonight's Special Achievement Award. And joining him is Peter Steinmetz. He is the chair of the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame and the vice chair of the Ontario Media Development Corporation. Peter? Thank you. I had the good fortune to, uh, to meet Frank Davies in the late 70s while I was performing here in the, in the city of Toronto. I think we were performing at the Brunswick House down on Bloor Street with a group called the Wonderful Grand Band. And uh, he had he'd taken an interest. You can applaud if you want. Yeah. That's enough for them. <laughs> Frank had taken an interest in a song that I'd written a few years before called Sonny's Dream. And we did. Thank you. You can bid on the fine art print if you like. We did a short-term administration agreement and eventually we did a 50-50 co-publishing deal and, uh, for that song and for every song that I would subsequently write for the next 20 plus years. And uh, during, during those great years, Frank was, he was an, an, uh, truly an inspiring source of advice and encouragement and true friendship. And when I needed him, and I often did, he was forever there. And I can honestly and truly say that were it not for Frank, I and many regional writers like me would have remained an unknown quantity in the Canadian songwriting community. Frank was a friend in a world of strangers, an idealist in a world of cynics, and in the publishing community, he possessed that rare quality of being a true, true lover of song. Frank's writers were a who's who of the Canadian writing community, and I am ever so pleased to be the one who gets to stand here this evening together with my friend Peter to present Frank Davies with this very well-deserved Special Achievement Award. Everybody. Frank, not only as the chairman of the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, a, a position that you define so completely for your successors, but on a personal level as your friend for 35 years, I am deeply honored to be standing here with the incomparable Ron Hines and to present you with this Special Achievement Award. Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron, for that lovely introduction. And there are so many stories I could say about uh, both our friendship and, uh, and the songs he has written and how much I love them and, and how much I love so many other songs that this country has produced. I had written a speech that uh, I'm sort of going to amend as I, as I go along because Peter, Sylvia, and Jody have uh, said some of the things that I was going to say and I, I don't want to repeat them only uh, because we have a live audience and I, I obviously want to keep it moving. But I also wanted to thank the Hall of Fame for this tremendous honor and to my friends and associates at the Ontario Media Development Corporation for sponsoring it. We rarely, if ever, achieve anything alone, and the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame was no exception. Good ideas are nothing without the financial and moral support of those that see them as such, embrace them, and stand behind them. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to recognize and thank a number of people and organizations who helped me to establish this idea and make this idea sing. Firstly, thank you to a small group of music publishers and their association, the CMPA, who back in 1998 listened to the plan, embraced it, and then contributed the necessary funds to put it in motion. Many of these companies and their individuals are here tonight, and I thank them profoundly. Thank you to the Songwriters Association of Canada, who just a few months later joined with the CMPA as its partner in this venture and continues to contribute in so many ways. Thank you, too, to all those who have served on the Hall of Fame Board of Directors since the beginning. An important thank you to repeat 
what Peter said earlier was to those companies that became known as the founding patrons of the Hall of Fame by providing considerable ongoing funding in 2000 and doing so during a particularly difficult time for the music industry. Thank you to the Hall of Fame's advisory board members for their generous expertise and time. Je voudrais également remercier la SPAC, la Société Professionnelle des Autocompositeurs du Québec et le Conseil d'administration. En se joignant à la SAC et le CMPA, on fait de ce gala et cette entreprise, le Panthéon des auteurs et compositeurs canadiens. Un événement bilingue à l'échelle nationale pour nos auteurs auto compositeurs canadiens. Thank you to Mark Nathanson, our very generous patron of the arts, supporter, and advisory board member, who, as he did for the first gala, came in with friends and family from the warmth of the Bahamas to join us here. Mark has added to his past generosity this year by sponsoring two songs tonight. Music knows no borders. Many of our finest songwriters traveled the world collaborating with other writers from near and far. Tonight, I would like to single out one of the greats from afar who is here with us. A member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he spent several months in Toronto filming the classic Blues Brothers movie and is about to be inducted into the American Songwriters Hall of Fame this June. He is the writer of such number one hits as In the Midnight Hour, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, and Knock on Wood. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the truly legendary songwriter, guitarist, and producer, Steve Cropper. Steve, would you stand and be recognized? A very special note of thanks to Peter Steinmetz, Sylvia Tyson, Michael McCarty, Stan Meisner, Diane Pinet, Gary Furness, Tony Tobias, Vivian, Tom, John, Mark, Alex, Sam, and Aideen for all their contributions as members of the current board of directors. And all others who continue the important work of ensuring the long-term goals and future of the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame especially Jody Scotchmer, who has worked so very hard this past year and who continues to do a fantastic job for the Hall of Fame, both in producing tonight's gala and as its executive director year-round. To two of my lifelong friends in music, Bill Ballard and Myron Wolfe, and to Australian journalist Richie York for enticing me to come to Canada 35 years ago in 1970 as well as all the incredibly talented songwriters I've worked with in this time since arriving from England. Lastly, I would like to public, publicly acknowledge and express my gratitude for the endless love and support of my wife, Linda, and my cherished daughters, Meg, Emily, and Kate. Just before I wrap, I just would like to say that I feel it is vitally important to preserve and celebrate Canada's rich songwriting legacy. It stretches all the way back to the very beginning of this country's history. It is my fervent hope that we continue to support its ability to do so. Thank you and merci à tous.